Welcome everyone to Trend Micro Talks. I am your host, Aaron Tomey, and today we're talking to Trend Micro Senior Security Engineer, Robin Purnell. Robin, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you, Aaron? I'm great. I'm really happy to have you on the show. And let's just start with you sharing a bit about your role here at Trend Micro. Yeah, sure. And um, thanks for having me. So um, yeah, Robin Purnell, I'm one of the senior security engineers here at Trend Micro. Um, I've worked at Trend for just about eight years um, and I've been in a number of different roles, but my, my current role is, is working with prospective and existing enterprise customers, helping them uh, devise security strategies, helping them to effectively defend their, their environments. So you know, I'll, I'll assist with, with customers with proving out um, uh, proof of concepts, um, successfully implementing products training customers on on how to best utilize our products and also um you know attending events you might have heard about uh the world tour uh recently it's been a busy few months that's for sure <laughs> yes it has so robin you mentioned there you've been working at trend for eight years so you've been working with customers prospects over eight years now how have you seen customer challenges evolve from 2015 when you started at Trend to today in 2023 as we record this? Yeah, I mean, a lot's changed, a lot's happening. And I, th- and I think one of the th- key things with, with, um, with cybersecurity is nothing ever seems to, to stand still. Um, so, I mean, over the last eight years, I mean, everyone knows about the threat of ransomware. Everyone knows how... You know, it, 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 the explosion of, of ransomware has kind of really kind of impacted organizations in, in, in that respect. Um, I think we started started to see more kind of a focus when I first started a trend. We started to see more of a focus on APT, so advanced persistent threats, nation state attacks, those kind of things that, that were really kind of um, started to become more prevalent um, and, more, and, and the attacks were becoming more sophisticated. I think the other thing that we saw was, you know, if you, if you look at some of the some of the more recent um, uh, large scale attacks like WannaCry, not Petia, that was they, these were global events. These were global cybersecurity incidents that affected a lot of customers and a lot of companies. Um, and I think the other thing is that over the years we've become much more connected, both as individuals as as people. We're connected to. We're constantly on our phones, on our devices, connected to the internet, and as well as organizations as well. So I think from a from from a from a customer a, 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 um, challenge uh, point, it's really um, been a, a a rapid evolution in terms of how do you manage that risk as as we've become more entwined with with um, with each other as, uh, from from a um, from a cybersecurity perspective. I think the other thing that I would say is that the the perimeter has changed as well. So I think obviously since 2015, we've seen, you know, the cloud adoption grow exponentially. I don't know what the multipliers are, but I I know that it's going to be three, four times in terms of, you know, now organizations adopting uh, cloud services. So that's kind of added a complexity to, 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 for, for organizations to be able to get visibility of what's going on within, you know, within their environment. And then, of course, you know, we've had recent global events like COVID, um, the pandemic. I think that's had an impact on, on all, how organizations are working. So um, certainly in the UK, um, the, you know, we saw we saw the organizations have to pivot very quickly to um, to manage a, 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 a remote workforce. So the workforce has now become more dispersed. And whilst I see that organizations are trying to get back to to, to, to more office based, I think it's going to be more of a hybrid rather than necessarily 100 percent in the office. So it's it's been there's there's been a lot of change, just not necessarily within cybersecurity that that has really kind of um, pushed organizations to to adapt and change over the last eight years or so. Yeah, I think you illustrated really well how dynamic this industry can be. Not only are the threats getting more advanced, they're changing every year, you're also having the number of attack attack vectors exploding, like you said, over the last few years. And then add on top of that, anything that's happening outside the cybersecurity industry, like COVID and things that are changing where people work, how they're working, 
So you pile all that onto these cybersecurity, you know, the IT teams, SOCs, the cloud security teams at these organizations, and they're trying to take all of that and then protect their organization in a way that makes sense and is in, you know, compliance that they need. It's a budget. It's like a hailstorm of things that they need to try and manage in order to be successful. Exactly. I mean, I didn't even touch on compliance and governmental changes and that kind of thing. I mean, again, that's that's you know, that's another another spinning plate that, that that customers have to really kind of learn to manage, as well as all the other aspects of of you know, you know, managing their their, their cyber risk essentially. Robin, looking at another side of things, you also moved with Trendmarker. You used to be in the United Kingdom, and now you're in Chicago in the U.S. Have you seen differences between, you know, the cybersecurity industry and landscape in the UK to now in the US? Um, I think, you know, when, when, I, when I, I, I think about it, I think there's a lot of similarities between um, operating in both countries. Um, I think when I, when, I, when I think back to the US and the, and the, and the UK and, and, and how the approach to cybercrime, I think that, you know, I think there's, from both sides, I think there's a desire to to tackle the problem, and I think there's there's a desire to to collaborate on on addressing cybercrime. So I think in that respect, I think there's a lot of a lot of similarities, and I think the challenges are still the same in, in you know with organisations in the UK versus the US. I mean, everyone says that everything in the US is bigger, and I think you know there's there's you know there, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, especially, especially when it comes down to organizational size and, and complexity. Um, when I think about some of the customers that I work with today in Chicago, I mean, they're tens of thousands of, of, of users or devices. You know, they're, they're, they're large organizations, and they're not even they're not even across state. They're they're they're, you know, they're, 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 they're just in the city. Whereas I think in the UK, I think larger you know that that would be considered a huge organization in, in the UK. I think the other the challenges for the UK with, with regards to kind of growth and complexity is is you know you've got um, you've got European countries so you've got that that challenge of once you grow beyond the national um, uh, boundaries then you're looking at you know language challenges you know operational challenges uh, are, are across uh, multi multiple multiple countries so in that respect I think there's some there's some challenges and there's some slight differences across the the um, uh, you know both, both sides of the pond, but I think that um, generally speaking, I mean, from a threats perspective, I think we're now kind of I, I, I kind of can see that see this see it being that we're we're in this together kind of thing. So, yeah, I think at this point it's hard to just stay isolated in this industry, and I think there's so much to be gained with the collaboration. Of, you know, obviously with governments, but even just with companies in the same industry that are all over the world and sharing information and working together because a lot of the threats now are affecting everyone. I agree. And I, and I think I took, I talked to CISOs um, throughout my time at, at, at Trend. And I think, you know, the similarities in terms of what concerns them in, in terms of that visibility and, and really kind of the ability to be able to identify and respond quickly um it, it's really kind of like the, the you know that that's that that that's um the same whether whether that's in the U, uk or in the us um i think the other thing is is that cyber cyber crime and cyber risk doesn't know any boundaries so you know so so in that respect you know it, it's um you know it doesn't matter where you are in the world there, there's there's always a, a challenge in terms of how you manage that Robin, thank you so much for joining me here on Trend Micro Talks. I've really enjoyed this conversation. I think there's a lot to be said for how quickly things have changed in just the last eight years. And I'm sure we're going to see that rapidly evolve, you know, in the next two, four, six, and another eight. So thank you for joining me. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, Aaron. And, and thanks for having me. I really appreciate you having me on uh, Trend Talks. Thank you.